My first flowers of the year have germinated. Each one of these little things has little baby flowers in it. And as thrilling as that is, I don't think it's quite as thrilling as what's about to happen outside. Hey, four-year-old. Guess what time it is? What? It's time to go plant the peas. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> I gotta grab something out of the greenhouse really quick. All right. Everything out here is looking good. We just need some plant markers. You wanna use blue? Okay, let's take those down to the garden. You wanna carry them? All right. Some of these beds are ready to go. Bees aren't necessarily ideal in-ground uh, markers. I've been using these for my plant starts, which they're perfect for that. However, I don't usually mark things long-term in the garden. Now you can use like cut up mini blinds, paint stirs. I've done those things and they're good ideas. Um, I'll show you what I do. I usually do like a temporary marking so I can see kind of what starts where, but I'll, I'll show you exactly what I do. Something temporary to start with and that's what we're doing today. Those there. All right, let's get the peas we're gonna plant. So right here is going to be our row for peas. We're gonna put this um, six foot piece of fence back up on these T-posts. We took it out because the zip ties were breaking and it was easier to put the soil in this way. You ready, Benny? On this row, I'm going to do blue potted garden peas, which these can be harvested young as snap peas or let grown out as soup peas. Green beauty peas, these climb really tall and are supposed to be good even whenever they get larger. And then uh, sugar magnolia tendril peas as well as magnolia blossom tendril peas. I like the way these taste, but I also think they're beautiful. So that's my purpose in growing these here. All right. so. Our trellis is gonna be here, I want these close. So I'm just gonna poke a hole here about half an inch deep, real near that. Benjamin's gonna plant. We'll do these holes uh, five or six inches apart. Good job, Benny. Good job. Okay. Well, we ended those, which next we're gonna do these green beauty ones. You ready? Let's go here. Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. All right, let's do this here. I like to poke the holes and let my kids uh, put the seeds in, especially when you're dealing with something larger like peas because that's easy for them to manage. It's easy for them to just drop one in per hole and it is better for you to risk a couple of seeds getting put in a hole rather than risk them getting planted far too deeply. This tends to help that a little bit more. Am I on your way? Excuse me. <laughs> Now Ben has the holes, and here when I get to the end of the place, I'm gonna go ahead and put that marker down just so I know for sure where he's done. I'm marking on these with pencil. So far I've just been using permanent marker, and it's been working, but someone told me that pencil uh, holds up in the weather better, so we're gonna give it a shot. What I do anytime I plant one of my garden beds is when I'm done, I get my cell phone out. You need three? Yeah. There you go. Good counting. Anytime I get done planting something, I will get my cell phone out and record a quick video uh, just for myself saying what I've planted when it's fresh on my memory. And even if I'm just reading it off of these little markers, uh, that way if something happens to these, if I come out here in the morning and you know my cat has moved them or if a helpful child 
picked them up uh, out of the garden bed, I would have a note so that when those plants come up, I could know the different types essentially, just to have a video note. That has saved my garden plan more times than one. I also like to make a sketch that I keep inside. Um, I like to use sticks to kind of map out an area or little markers just so I know where things are. If I have a video saying, what's where and then I make a little sketch inside it doesn't matter what happens I've, I don't rely too heavily on markers in the beds in my experience they are hard to to figure out something that lasts all season uh, and even if you find something that lasts all season if you have children around it is they're just easy to get misplaced and you want to have a record of what's what's planted in your beds so if you love something you can plant it again last type of piece for this row let me set the camera down What'd you say? Look at that greenhouse. It's pretty, huh? It's gonna be cool. Now, this may be a silly thing to show, but I'm sure somebody out there will appreciate the extra instruction. You know, I get like half the people that tell me I over explain things and half the people are like, thank you for being so thorough. So, you know, for those of you who think this is uh, obvious, just bear with us. Literally, video on my phone, and what I'm gonna do is something like this. In the first long bed in the garden, I have planted four types of peas on the six foot trellis, uh, magnolia tendril peas, green beauty peas, sugar magnolia purple tendril peas, and down on the end, blue potted peas. So yeah, super basic little nine second note for myself that explains where in the garden it is so that I can remember. When these plants start coming up, it will be obvious that this is four different types of peas. When they start to have their different attributes, some of these are tendril peas, so they're gonna have lots of little swirly things on them. Some of them may be taller than the other. They're different colored pods. And since I've planted them all on the same trellis, even if those markers go away, now that I have that note, I can obviously see which plants are different. And because I have a record of it, I'll know their names. Do you be a mischievous four-year-old? Maya's putting the trellis back up. I probably should have waited till that was back up to plant those because it might have uh, moved them around a little bit while we were getting it situated, but it's fine. I mean, they might not be in a perfectly straight row, but they'll grow in the general vicinity of the trellis and they'll grab hold of whatever they're in the general vicinity of. One thing I like to do when I am planting the garden is I like to sneak radishes in like anywhere there's extra space. Now, if you'll notice here, there's about a foot between the edge of this bed and the trellis that these peas are going to grow on. Now, as these peas get bigger, their foliage will fill out and these will be producing until around May here. They don't mind a light freeze and uh, they may get a light freeze because our last frost date isn't until the middle of April. However, it gets warm really fast after that. So by the end of May, I'll be pulling these peas out and I'll be putting green beans on this trellis. But as for right now, I've just put these peas in the ground and I've got all of this space. It'll probably be another month or so before these really get to climbing good here and start filling out in foliage. And so what I'm gonna do is along this wall, not right next to the wall, just a couple of inches out, I'm gonna sew one line of radishes all the way down this little side part of this trellis. Sewing them today, the same as the peas. Now, typically radishes only take like 21 to 28 days. Um, our days aren't quite that long yet. Whenever you see like the amount of time on a package, that's usually kind of talking about like optimum circumstances. Our days are still a little short, so it'll take a little bit longer than that. However, now's the time of year that you wanna grow radishes because once it gets hot, they bolt quickly, they go to seed, and even if they don't do that, they're really pithy and the flavor's not as good. And by the time the peas start getting tall and filling out and kind of shading the ground here, um, my radishes will be ready to harvest. That's just a good way for me to utilize this bed space. So I'm going to sow a row. Um, I'm gonna start with a pack of French breakfast radishes. Again, I start by taking one of these little markers writing the variety on it and putting it in the ground before I even start putting my seeds in. Now, just very quickly, I'm going to put little dents in the soil about every three inches. Don't have to go deep. These are small seeds. And to the best of my ability, I'm gonna drop one seed per hole 
Likely it'll end up being more like two in some holes. That's okay, I can thin them out later. See where I've got my little dents. Just gently brush the soil over. It rained here this morning for a while, so the soil is nice and moist, you can kind of see. It's uh, sticking to my fingers pretty good. I'm not gonna water these. It's supposed to rain tonight and it's supposed to rain this weekend. I typically like to keep an eye on the forecast because you don't wanna plant things, especially if you're planting really tiny seed things like lettuces or carrots, right before you're about to get like a deluge. Um, if you've got a whole lot of rain in the forecast, I usually hold off on those things and wait until it's gonna be a little more dry and I can control the water. For things like peas that actually do well being really wet, sometimes you can even soak them for better germination. For like 12 hours before, I did not soak these because I knew I was putting them in really moist soil before a rainy weekend. You know, there's a reason why farmers talk about the weather. You know, like we, we have made it a cliche thing that it's just small talk to talk about the weather, but if you're gonna be serious about gardening, you're gonna get really familiar with your forecast and the weather app on your phone. Maya and I wake up every single morning and check the weather. Throughout the day, we check the weather. Before we go to bed, we check the weather. Because our plans are so dependent on what the weather is doing, you always have to know what the forecast is. And if it changes, you have to be willing to change your plans. Now because the rain is coming, I'm actually gonna hold off sowing any carrots today. I am planning on sowing just a couple varieties of spring carrots. I don't grow a lot here because it does get so warm so fast, or it can, that a lot of times carrots don't have long enough to really develop with good flavor. So I usually wait for fall for those, but I will sow a few, just not right before we're about to get a bunch of rain. They'll get misplaced or uh, covered up too much and not germinate well. Now this whole trellis is covered with peas and there's a nice row of radishes right next to it. Now let's go around to the other side. I wanna sow just a couple of things over on this side of this bed. Not a whole lot though. Last year I, got really excited sowing my spring stuff and put it all in one area over on the other side of the garden just filled in two uh two sides of a bed and a whole other bed with my spring stuff and i was envisioning you know just a couple months down the road having it all full and lush and that's exactly what happened it was beautiful the rest of the garden was uh puny little new seedlings and uh transplanted plants mid-May, but that little area was full of big developed uh, spring sown plants. However, when all of those things started to peter out and go to seed, as soon as the weather got really hot, I had to pull them all out and then I had this big bare space. And it never did quite recover. I re-sowed some stuff, but by the time that was full, the rest of the garden was kind of dying back. It just, I didn't like how that went. So this year, instead of putting all of my spring stuff in one place, I'm spacing it out. So I'm just gonna put a couple of things down this bed, a few little areas, and then I'm gonna move on to a different bed. Have y'all noticed how deliberately I have not pointed the camera that way? That's because the greenhouse is really starting to shape up and we're trying to kind of keep it secret for uh, the reveal video. One variety that I am determined to have success with is this walking stick kale. I got these seeds from Tradewinds Fruit. Grew some of it in the fall and it came up with pretty good promise. I thought it was gonna make it through this mild winter, but that last hard freeze we had did it in. And I'm thinking I'm gonna plant just a couple of plants right behind this little entry thing right when you come in. And we're gonna put a sign on the other side of that. But I'm thinking a couple of really tall, neat looking kale trees right behind here would be a really cool dynamic thing. I don't know how uh, far into the heat this will last, but I guess we're gonna figure it out. Now here's just some really rubbish plant stakes. I don't know, I guess they have lasted a couple of seasons. I'm gonna just lay one of these right here for right now so I can remember that that's where the end of that kale is. And I know that's silly, um, but it's gonna work for now. There's a marker. Now I know that any sprouts that come up over on that side of that are the walking stick kale. And again, I'll be making a video on my phone. I like to do that because it keeps up with the date too of when that video was made so I know when it was planted. A lot of times what I'll do too is like sticks. I'll take sticks and kind of make a little line in the bed. That's actually probably better than this. 
and then that way I've got just a little visual marker of where the boundary is. At this point, I'm thinking about what is going in these beds when uh, the frost has passed. I know on this trellis right inside the gate, I wanna do a melon. I'm gonna do a Kajari melon there. It's really rich, full foliage. The foliage of that will fill out a good half of this bed. So I need to keep that in mind now. Anything that I sow along the bottom here, um, I don't want it to be something that's gonna be competing with that Kajari melon come summer. So right now, a really good thing to plant right next to this would be um, something that I know is going to be winding down when the summer comes. Now I'll plant the melon, direct sown, probably mid to late April on the inside of this trellis. It won't start really climbing up this trellis until towards the end of April or May. So if I were to plant some lettuces or something here that would be wrapping up around that time, that would be a good use of this space. This is another really good time to plug in some radishes. You could do some carrots right here. Something that you know is going to kind of be tapering off as your summer stuff is really getting established. Now what I wouldn't wanna do in this instance is put something like peas on that trellis because whenever I need to be sowing the melon, those peas would still be in their prime. I wouldn't wanna tear them out. So even though right now I'm sowing my spring stuff, having that summer plan in mind is really important. I did one line going this way of a radish right here. Uh, those are going to germinate really quickly and essentially that'll be my little barrier line to know that my kale area is right there and this one little line of radishes will come up. And right here, I'm gonna sow some Chef's Medley uh, Mesclin Mix lettuce. This is gonna be really good here, um, but this will quickly bolt, especially, uh, this probably has arugula in it and that'll be one of the first things that bolts in it as the weather starts to warm. So this will be a good thing to put in this spot as a neighbor to the melons. As they start filling in, uh, this will be ready to come out. Oh snap, I just poured out half of this bag of seeds onto the ground. Good thing uh, lettuce packages come with a lot of seeds. Super simple. I'm just gonna kinda make a little bit of a dent area. I just told you that I don't sow lettuces right before heavy rain. The exception to that is if you are sowing for baby greens because it doesn't really matter if they get uh, put out of place. If they get washed a little up to the side or pushed too close together, it won't matter. Okay, so you see I've got one band of these greens. Probably could have gotten two had I not just dumped that pack out. I'm gonna go ahead and grab another pack of a different variety. Here we go, I've got this uh, red wing lettuce mix. I'm gonna do another band right next to this one. So this is what my seeds look like. And I just come and brush the soil over top. I'm not trying to really plant these super deep. Lettuce actually benefits from a little bit of light for germination. So you definitely don't want these to be deeply planted. It really is just as simple as brushing the soil around. Now, I largely just mix two seed packs together. The Chef's Blend Medley from Botanical Interest and the Red Wing Lettuce Mix from Baker Creek. So, I'm going to take one marker and write one on one side and one on the other and stick it right down in the middle of that space. Now another thing that I personally use as a guideline when I'm planting my garden. And this is one of those things, it's kind of hard sometimes for me to explain the method behind what I'm doing because I'm just doing what makes sense to me. However, I will share with you what makes sense to me. I use a lot of natural barriers in my garden to kind of know where things begin and end. For instance, I just planted that lettuce right to the edge of this trellis. That to me is the natural barrier. When I started the radishes, right at the end of this trellis. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll treat this as a space and I'll come in and I'll plant a couple of things here. And so in my mind, when I'm looking at my garden, you see I did that there as a little block before the trellis. And I don't know that there's any real purpose to that 
other than the fact that it just makes sense to me. So when I put that marker there, I know in my mind that that ended at the end of the trellis and I can plant something next to it. And then I don't have to go in and worry about barriers in different places because I know that I will have ended at that trellis. Now, you might not think that way and you might need to create some barriers and know exactly. Some people do square foot gardening where they mark everything off in actual, you know, one by one foot spaces, that works too. But for me, I just use the general natural barriers. I'll, I'll plant from, one post to the next post and that'll be like a section or from one section of the trellis from one t-post to the next t-post um and that works just figure out what works for you that's okay now i'm gonna leave all of this side of that tall fence empty because i know that when those peas are done and i have to tear them out that bed's gonna look really naked so i would like to leave that side empty so i can plant peppers and eggplants, maybe a couple of my little dwarf tomatoes over there. Things that will be starting to fill out in June when I'm tearing the peas out, replanting that with green beans, so that bed doesn't look naked whenever that time comes. Hey, sweet Maya. <gasps> Almost showed the greenhouse. I can't look at you right now. You're standing right in front of it. <laughs> hey, you're the one who doesn't want to reveal it. Um, You're on board, too. Don't I make am. this a split good, decision. Don't make it a good cop, bad cop thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's hauling mulch. He's doing such a good job. Right, because I don't have any more two by fours mm -hmm. to do what I need to do. So he's on a pause on the greenhouse? Until after the deep south thing. Yep. And but, I'm gonna work for a half day. Then I'm gonna leave again. I'm going up to Missouri, help out hardiness approach. Then I'll come back and hopefully work on the greenhouse and maybe get it done. And you're about to have to bake a cake too. So yeah. He's got to bake a birthday cake. We have birthday boys this week. Greenhouse or birthday cake? Mm. You don't have enough That's lumber. The, I know, but I'm just saying, like, even if I did, I would choose birthday cake. So the tomatoes are going to be here and in this space underneath the tomato plants. I could go ahead and do something like a long row of radishes. I probably won't because I have plenty of other spaces that I can plant radishes. But if you are pressed for space in your garden and it's now early spring and you know you're not going to be transplanting your tomatoes for another six weeks go ahead and plant some radishes in that space get a crop out of that before it's tomato transplanting time i'm actually adding a trellis to this side these two beds like that run perpendicular to the others um are gonna have a tomato trellis that goes on one side of both of them adding more tomato space and I thought I would sew a line of beets right down the middle of this bed because the trellis will go here and when the tomatoes are filling out, the beets will be finishing up and I'll still be able to put peppers and eggplants, herbs and flowers on this side. So one line of beets all the way down the middle. Which is really an okay idea. Um, I did drop half a package of seeds on one side. So there's like 40 seeds in like a one foot area. I have to thin those out pretty hard. If ever I come off as some sort of expert, I just want to clear it up for you that uh, totally not, totally a goofy home gardener learning as I go, dropping large amounts of seeds in one small area. Um, but if your uh, clumsy disposition and slippery fingers cause you to sow way too many beets in one area, uh, you just have a baby green salad to look forward to is what it is. I gotta do one more thing while I'm down here. I keep forgetting to bring my pruners down. I actually remember this time. Tonight I'm having uh, Toby and Ben's joint birthday dinner. And wouldn't you believe that my kids who get to eat real food all the time, um, things from scratch that many people have never even tasted from scratch, and a significant amount of their food grown in the yard, every birthday dinner they ask for like hot dogs and they specify with white buns, um, cake, they like store-bought or they like daddy to make it because he'll make it with Cool Whip. Um, pizza, you know, stuff that I didn't cook. And I oblige, because it's their birthday, uh, one day when they grow up, they'll be like, mom, I miss your cooking. I want you to cook for me the stuff from scratch. But right now in childhood, they're like, please, can we have junk food for our birthday? 
This lemon balm will be huge before you know it. Into the house I go to feed my children their birthday dinner of choice. Some of you I will see at Deep South Homestead's gathering down in Mississippi this weekend. I'm looking forward to that a lot. You ready to go inside? Yeah. How about this? I'll make the hot dogs and pizza, you bake the cake. You're picking up the pizza. <laughs> you were gonna bake the cake anyway. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us today and planting the garden with us. I bless you, until next time.